my friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we will learn how to display uh, things on the screen, but things that don't belong to the map as usual, but are directly direct displayed in screen coordinates, like, for example, everything that we had that we have here in the head-up display, the hearts, the icons here, and the, the money counter. Things like that are just in, in screen coordinates, yes, and are not map entities. Um, so this is done mostly in Lua with the drawable API, the drawable type. Um, actually, there are three subtypes of drawable surfaces. This is, these are just simple, basic images. Um, text surfaces, so this is to display some text, and sprites, animated pictures. Um, so the main feature of any of these drawable object is to be able to be drawn, to be displayed onto some destination surface. Um, and all the rest can allow more customization, but this is this is really the, the basic function that we are going to use. Um, okay, so as a first example, we will try to just display uh, this example of fixed image while we are on uh, this map. So how do we do that? Um, we are not going to need these, but actually to create either a surface, a text or a sprite, it's always very similar. Sol.sprite.create or sol.textsurface.create or sol.surface.create. So in our case, we want a simple surface from a PNG file. So it's sol.surface.create, but the second version here, the one that loads the file. It's also possible to create an empty surface and to draw something uh, on that surface later. And you just specify the, the size. But here we will use, yeah, this one. So the file name should be uh, relative to the sprites directory. Even if it's not really a sprite, uh, we usually put all our PNG files uh, still inside that directory. And here it's uh, this one, team logo fixed.png in the menus directory. So um, I will call my variable logo EM IMG and sol.surface.create and then the path relative to the surprise directory. So it will be menus slash uh, team logo fixed. And I need the extension here. And then what, what do I need to do with that? I need to draw it on the screen at every frame. And one way to do that, this is the low level way, let's say, we will see how to do it uh, use, using menus later uh, to allow a little bit more control and yeah, more easy uh, customization and more and easy, easier usage. But you can use the map object. It has a low level on draw event that takes as a parameter the we can we can call this the screen. It is the destination surface where where we can draw things additionally to uh, everything that the the engine has already drawn. So all entities, all map entities that belong to the map, will be drawn first, and then you have on draw here. Uh, so this is the time to draw our image onto the screen. And that's it. So you, you, as you can see, it's displayed on the upper left part here because we didn't specify any destination coordinates. So by default, it's zero, zero. And even above that, we also have our HUD icons here. 
Uh, that's because they are displayed as as menus. So they don't use this Android API, but they use the menu API that we will see in the next tutorial. But um, no matter if you are using menus or not, you are always uh, playing with these objects here, like surfaces, sprites, and text surfaces. So that's why I wanted to, to introduce them first. Um, okay, so let's try to display our nice logo uh, at some other place on the screen. For instance, um, I don't know, 40? 40. 40. Because why not? Okay, it's, it's completely weird to have this logo here on my map, but this is for uh, example purposes. And as you can see when i on another map, I no longer see that logo. That's because the logo picture is only displayed uh, in the, the Andro event of this particular map, the map outside castle, and not any other map. Um, yeah, we can also display a sub-region of any drawable object. Um, if you are interested, you can you can try that. For instance, let's say that for some reason we only want to show uh, part of that image of that of that image. We can we can use draw region, and maybe um, maybe let's say ten ten, and take only twenty pixels and twenty pixels, and we still display it at the same place. So that's a lot of parameters, but you can do that. Oops. So, okay, we have our picture here, or our sub-region more exactly. And now if you want to display, let's say, an animated, an animated sprite instead of a fixed picture, you can use that other API sprite. Um, we already saw how to create a sprite actually, but um, yeah, it's the same idea. Instead of sol.surface.create, you do sol.sprite.create and you specify the sprite ID. So sprites are resources from the point of view of Solaris, unlike PNG files that are just, yeah, files. Uh, which means that they are declared in the um, quest tree here. They can have a description and everything. Um, and uh, the idea of a sprite is just the path also from the sprites directory, but without any extension, like it's displayed in the tree here. So uh, we want to display this sprite, which is a cool animated logo of the Solaris team. So it's called team logo that sprite. The file is team logo dot dat, but the sprite ID is team logo. Team logo. And in our on draw function, we will just draw our sprite. Probably we won't. We don't want to. Uh, only draw a sub region of our sprite, but let's draw it completely. Yay! Okay, cool. And finally, to display some text, uh, you can use the text surface surface uh, type. We'll create some welcome text here text surface dot create. So text surface dot create takes a table as a parameter. And that table can have a lot of things like alignment, the font. So you can check the documentation. But um, the one we will use here is just text. The text to show. Let's show welcome to this tutorial. 
Okay. And now that we are, have our nice text surface, we can also display it at every frame during this map on the screen, uh, maybe above the logo somewhere. Mm, let's say 60 and 20. Yay, welcome to this tutorial. So it doesn't fit very well with our nice icons here, but I just wanted to, to show you how to, to use this API and, and these types, sprite, text surface, surface. Um, yeah, so here we are, again, we are local to this map. We are only touching the Android event of one map, but we, but some other types uh, also have the Andro event. And actually we can try to move this to the game uh, so let's go to game manager because this is the place that that creates the game and we can do exactly the same code but using this time game on draw so now our uh, sprite and our text will be global to the game will belong to the game and not only to that map so even if I go to another map, the text and the sprite stay. And even when the I'm transitioning between two maps, uh, the the Android object, the Andro event doesn't care. It's it's still called at every frame, even when we are switching maps. And if we want just for information, <laughs> you can even use Andrew on sol.main, which I think is crazy. Wait, I didn't paste the correct thing. That thing I want to remove only that thing. Yes. <clears throat> but sol.main, so here I mean main.lua, the main script of my, uh, of my game, of my quest more exactly. So it means that even during this logo part here, before the game, before any game starts, we already can display things. And that actually, that is actually how um, we can make a title screen or a save game menu or anything that is displayed before starting a game. Um, even though in reality, it is really recommended to use menus, like we will see in the next tutorial. Um, because menus can be used to better wrap um, everything that we want to display on the screen at um, at any moment and and with some some context uh, and what I mean by that by that is that a menu can belong to a map or to a game or to another menu and several menus can even be stacked um, which is the case usually in the complex pause menu, like an inventory. And um, they will receive events from the engine. So key events, mouse events, everything. And the engine will be the one that takes care of which menu is on uh, the front and should be notified first of um, keyboard events, for example. But um, you can you can try to use the Andro APIs and next time we will see how to use menus to organize all of this better and um, yeah and we will we will make a, a title screen I think in the next tutorial to have a, a very nice example um, okay I guess that's it for this tutorial um, thank you for watching and as always, please join our Discord and we will help. Thank you all. Bye.